Hello, this is Craig with Karshalton Advisory, and we're going to start our walkthrough of Chapter 4, which is the Loading Data into Power Pivot chapter from Kali and Singh's Power Pivot and Power BI, the Excel User's Guide to DAX, Power Query, Power BI, and Power Pivot in Excel. So I've had this book now for a... Oh, probably six weeks, and, and it's fantastic. So I, I do highly recommend it if you're curious how to use Power Pivot, Power Query, Power View. Uh, definitely get it on your wish list and pick it up as soon as you can. There's there's a lot of great things in it. Uh, and one, one challenge that I found with it while working through it is while they were great and they provided a lot of sample files, which you can download from their website, and I'll include a link to that in the video description. What I found is, for example, this is chapter four. When you open up the chapter four file, all the examples are done. I'm the type of learner that I really have to, to kind of roll up my sleeves and try things out and then finally things will sink in. So what I found is that I open up the file, well, everything's already done. It's a lot tougher for me to understand the process of uh, learning these techniques uh, in that type of situation. Uh, and so what I've done is, uh, if there's any other learners out there who are like me, uh, what I've done is I've taken their download file and what I've done is I've stripped everything out to kind of a fresh sheet so that what we can do together through this video series is work through the examples that they give so that you get the opportunity to, to in this case, to link files and load files. At the end of the video, you should be at the exact same point where their chapter four download file was. So what you wanna do is download the file that I prepared for you. So I won't, I won't be offended, pause the video, and uh, in the video description, uh, just I guess underneath here, is going to be a link to where I have that file located. It's gonna be the chapter four load data underscore stripped. Uh, as I've pulled out all of the the data in here. Okay, perfect, you've downloaded that, you're back. Let's start working through this chapter so that you can get as comfortable with Power Pivot and Power BI as is possible. So what this chapter is about is introducing you to the the process of loading data into Power Pivot, because it's if you haven't spent a lot of time doing it in the past, it is a little bit unique. Uh, there are some cool things that they introduce about Power Pivot if you're a Power Pivot rookie like I was. Um, and so some of the tips that they've provided is first off, well, how do you launch a Power Pivot window? So why don't we demonstrate that? So we have our file open here. And if we are on the home tab in Excel 2016, so there's two ways that you can access it. One is finding the Power Pivot tab. Uh, so just by selecting that, you're going to see this green icon here called Manage. And when you click on that, that is going to launch a Power Pivot window for us. The other option to do it is in the Data tab. So again, in the Data tab, this time it's a little tinier, we have Manage Data Model. So let's click this and see what happens. Not a whole lot. So, and, and there's a reason for that. So our Power Pivot window has opened up uh, and you'll notice it is, it is blank. There's, there's no data in that. So that's what we're gonna do through the rest of the video so that we can have some data in here. So one of the, the benefits of Power Pivot and Power Query is that it can access data from a whole range of sources. You can pull it from uh, Excel worksheets, you can pull it from text files, uh, external databases, SharePoint lists, uh, even, even cloud services. So there's a whole, whole wide range of sources that you can use for this. So I'm going to go through a couple samples for you and describe some of the benefits and some of the limitations that are included uh, by using that particular data format as highlighted in Chapter 4 of the book. So first off, let us use a linked table. So a linked table in this description is 
a table that's contained within your Excel workbook already. So if you tab over to the budget table tab worksheet, what you'll find in here is a table. So we know it's a table, uh, one, because of how it looks. But if we go on the upper right hand side here, we'll see the table tools contextual tab. When we click on that, it gives us all of our table tools, as well as we can spot up here in the upper left hand corner that this table is named. Now that is one of the tips that they emphasize throughout this chapter is if you're going to link a table into Power Pivot, make sure before you do so that you have it named. So now that we have this table selected, let's get it added to the data model. So that's as simply as clicking in the Power Pivot tab. We are going to select Add to Data Model. All right, so it whirs a little bit in the background here. And here we now have our first amount of data, or our first linked table into Power Pivot. So there's a couple things. First off, it's going to look awfully familiar to what you saw in Excel. Uh, but there are a few differences. Uh, one thing, we can't actually change any of these cells. So I can, I can type in here, nothing's going to happen. Uh, it, it's a great system, though, because it, when I make changes in Excel, these will get carried back up into Power Pivot for me, but it doesn't work the other direction. So this is a nice, quick, fast way of getting data into the system. Uh, you know, you have everything there. Most of us are comfortable using tables, and this is the next step. We can see within the window here that there are you know, um, almost 1,900 rows of data, uh, and the columns are the same. All those sorts of things are are similar to what we saw in Excel. Now, the next way of getting data into the data table is uh, from exporting from a text file. So in this case, how we want to retrieve that is from the Power Pivot window, what we're going to do is select from other sources. Okay, when I click in here, now, I haven't sent you a text file. Um, I'm assuming most of you will have a text file around, but uh, I'll go through the process of importing a text file into Power Pivot. So in the table import wizard, we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're gonna select text file. Once we've done this, it this is the name of the table. So you notice down here, this one was called budget, which matched up what was in Excel. So whatever we type in here is going to be the name of the table within Power Pivot. So I'll just call this CSV file. Our file path, I'll find where that data file I had here. So this is just a CSV file that I prepped for this. So I've double clicked it. Um, in this case, it's a CSV, but if it's pulling text from another sort of file, there may be some other delimiter. So you can click this drop down selector here, and uh, if it's separated by a colon, a semicolon, a space, a regular colon, a pipe, or ver vertical bar, in this case they are comma separated. And down here in this window you can see the data that, that was in my text file. Now the first thing, I'm just going to spread these rows out here, the first thing you notice, the, the title row doesn't match up. And so what I'm going to do is toggle this selector here, so that the first row is going to be the headers of our data table. So we'll click that. Perfect. Now I have the proper headings. I have my data and I can hit finish. Okay, it looks like everything worked out here. There was 44 rows in that file. I will hit close. And now we will see not only was there the budget file, or the budget table, there's also this new data CSV file. Now in this case, we're not gonna leave it in the workbook here, uh, but I wanted to demonstrate how you can add it in. So let us delete this. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with permanently deleting that. Um, next, what I'm going to do is, we can copy and paste. So, you know, this isn't, probably your best way to, to put data in, but it, it's possible. So I am just going to uh, 
do a quick copy here. I'll do it onto a blank sheet and I will paste this as values. Great. So from here, I'm going to copy this. Again, I'm going to open up my Power Pivot window one more time. Make sure that this shows up in the window here. And now, in the upper left, I can see this paste icon. And so what happens, this isn't actually going to paste it into this table that's already here. When I highlight this, it's actually going to show that it's going to come to a new table. So let's do that. And I will call this paste example. There is a toggle here to use the first row as headers. Uh, and, and when I copied, I made sure that that was going to be the case. So that's OK. And after a little bit of processing, we now have, once again, two data tables within Power Pivot here. So the budget, which is the linked Excel file that we started with, as well as the paste example. So there are benefits and drawbacks to each of these methods. So with the linked Excel table like budget here, uh, the benefits are it's quick. Uh, anything that I edit in Excel is automatically going to get pulled up into Power Pivot. And any columns that I add to the source file will also get pulled up into Power Pivot for me. There are some drawbacks to that, though, is you can only link within the same workbook. So I can't pull an Excel table from a different Excel workbook. Second, it doesn't handle large data loads very well. So if there are tens of thousands of rows, you're going to find processing issues and your power pivot is not going to be very responsive for you. What happens as well is every time you leave the power pivot window um, and return, power pivot is going to reload the data, uh, even if you didn't make any changes to the source data. So that can slow down your workflow if, if you're using a lot of tables within, uh, with a lot of linked Excel tables. You can't schedule an auto refresh like you can with an external database. Uh, with an external database, you can have it pull every hour, every day, every week, depending on how current you need your data. And you know this drawback is true of all the formats. That now that this budget table is an, an Excel linked file, I can't convert it to a different type of of source file. With the pasting example that we did. Um, it, it's, it's handy in that you can paste from any table-shaped source, um, including other Excel workbooks. However, it's not going to be linked for you. As well, like an Excel linked table, it struggles with large data sets. The columns in it are fixed, so we can't add any new columns into this table now. And you may find that uh, what looked like a table by the time you paste it in, is, wasn't actually a table, which can cause a lot of confusion trying to straighten that out. Text files, you know, their benefit from that is there are, there are lots of different ways of getting text file source data. Uh, as well, it handles extremely long um, rows, like amount of data, much better than an Excel linked file. You can link to an external file, whereas with an Excel link table, you couldn't link to an external Excel table. As long as you keep the file path and the file name identical, you can, you can locate it wherever you want within your directory. All right, so that wraps up the first half of chapter four. Uh, I hope you're able to follow along and paste in, or excuse me, link in your own Excel table. Uh, before you start the next video, uh, try finding a uh, comma-separated value or a text file and importing that into your document as well so you have that experience. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following along. And make sure to subscribe so you know when I get future chapters up and posted onto YouTube. Have a great night.